Hello, this is the next video in a playlist that I'm calling General Linear Models Design of Experiments. And this is actually part two of a little mini series within that playlist that I'm calling One Way Fixed Effects ANOVA. Now, here we're going to look at estimating the parameters of our model. And our model is y equals x beta plus epsilon. That's the general model. The errors are iid, mean zero, constant variance, sigma squared, covariances are zero. Now in here, and if you go to part one, beta is filled with parameters mu, tau one, tau two, all the way to tau a. And we want to estimate these parameters. So for instance, if we want to estimate the ith treatment effect, so it'd be mu plus tau i, you know, is it estimable? And, and really, is it estimable means, is there a unique estimate every time we do it? You know, we can always estimate it with silly estimators or something that is not unique. But the goal, is there a unique estimator? Meaning, is it estimable? So here, the way we define it is, if, you know, has, first of all, it has to be a linear combination of the betas. So mu plus tau i has to be represented like this. So where this is a vector, and of course the beta is a vector. And it can be. So lambda has ones in positions 1 and i plus 1, and zeros elsewhere. And that way, when you know, we do this multiplication, it picks off the mu and it picks off the tau i. So it can be represented as a linear combination. So that's step 1. And since lambda is in the row space of the design matrix x, then mu plus tau i is estimable. Now we'll get into a little more specifics in a second, but before we do, I would recommend that you review the mini-series on estimability that is in this playlist, General Linear Models Design of Experiments. Now let's consider the first treatment group effect, so mu plus tau 1. And we want to find the unique least squares estimator for this term, and to me, this word right there is so mind-bogglingly cool or impressive that it I don't know what to say and you'll see in a second why I think that now first we must estimate or find a row that satisfies this okay now we want to estimate the first treatment effect mu plus tau 1 so it has to be represented as a linear combination of the betas Okay, so where lambda is rho x, and we know that we want mu plus tau 1, so uh, this lambda has to be a 1, 1, and the rest 0. So that way, when it, it picks off the mu and the tau 1, so the uh, rho prime x has to be this. So now, there are an infinite number of possibilities. Okay. And, and hence, why this is unique is still just so surprising to me. So here's the design matrix. We have a column of ones, and then we have ones that represents when the observation comes from treatment one, treatment two, all the way to treatment n. Now, if we look at row one, and these are just examples, and, we, and it's a one and then the rest zeros. So when we do this multiplication, it picks off that first row. And the, and the first row is 1, 1, and the rest zeros, which is exactly what we need, right? That's the lambda that when we use picks off row or mu and tau 1. And so if we use row 1, that is a possibility. But it could also be row 2. This says take 2 times row 1 subtract row 2. So we get 2, 2, rest zeros when we do this, and then we get minus 1, minus 1, the rest zeros. So when we add those, right, because it has, it's this, then we get 1, 1, and the rest zeros, which is exactly what we need. So this row 2 would also satisfy this requirement. Row 3 would satisfy it. Row 4, row 4 says just take the second row which is 1, 1, the rest zeros. Or we could take the average of the first n rows, and then that would 
actually when you add those together it would be one one and the rest zeros so there's an infinite number of rows that make this relationship possible and this is a requirement if you go back and review the mini series on estimability so there's an infinite number of possibilities but somehow we're going to get a unique least squares estimate to me that's is uh, doesn't make sense just yet now I'm telling you that that it is unique and if you go through the review videos any row I that we choose row I times mu is unique okay and that should be a prime and because this is true any one we pick this is unique okay so we're breaking it down into why it's unique here so let's just pick the easy one and, and really see the review videos on estimability. So let's just choose the easy one, which was this row one. Right? It's a one, the rest zeros. So then the unique least squares estimate of the first treatment effect is this. So we plug in, right? This is the estimate of the first treatment effect this was one one the rest zeros and we have to plug in our least squares estimate for beta which is which is also not unique there's an infinite number of least squares estimates so how can this end up being unique right so that's another reason why i think that word unique is just crazy but it's true now rho can be represented as is lambda can be represented as rho transpose x the least squares estimate is this. It's x transpose x generalized inverse x transpose y. But then if we look at that, that is the perpendicular projection matrix on the column space of x, which we call m. But look at this. y is, it doesn't change. It's unique. It's the responses that we observed. However, rho m is unique for any rho that we pick. So this ends up being a unique estimate. Now, if you look at part one, my was it creates this treatment mean vector, but here we're just picking off the first observation, which is the mean for group one, and that's it. So in, that's our unique least squares estimate. So in general, the least squares estimates of the treatment of the ith treatment effect is the mean of the ith treatment. You know the the mean of the observations when we expose them to treatment I. Now is mu estimable? The answer is no. Mu equals lambda beta. We the lambda would have to be a one and the rest zero. So that way when it does this multiplication it just picks off the mu. But lambda is not in the row space. So mu is not estimable. But some very sh smart person uh, created, you know, if you impose a side condition called, you know, where you, the sum of the tau i is equal to zero, which implies that if we look at this sum, when you take the sum in, this goes to zero, and there's a of those, we get a mu. Now divide both sides by a, and we get mu is equal to this. But mu plus tau i's are estimable. So we would estimate mu with this, we, you know, the ith treatment, the sum of the ith treatment effect. But if we plug in the ith treatment effect here, and really remember that's the sample mean, the treatment I mean, and then you take that out and it's the double sum of the y's, which is actually the grand mean. So we'd estimate the mu parameter with the sample grand mean. Now most I shouldn't say most. Some statisticians think it's silly to impose a side condition. They would just leave mu as unestimable. But some statisticians like this side conditions because they want an estimate of that that uh, overall mean. But the tau i, is it estimable? The answer is no. Because to look at tau i, this lambda, you know, to create the linear combinations of the beta, would have to have a 1 in position i plus 1 and zeros elsewhere. So it picks off that ith 
ta you know the the tau i but lambda is not in the row space no matter how you just you can't do it so tau i is not estimable however with the side condition you can think of tau i as this right but this is estimable and with the side condition mu is estimable so we'd estimate tau i with these two estimates but those two estimates are this so it's the ith treatment mean and the overall sample grain mean so in summary mu plus tau i are estimable with unique least squares estimate uh, yi dot r now mu and tau i are not estimable but with the side condition that the tau i is sum to zero then a unique least squares estimate for mu and tau i exist and it's represented by this that's the grand sample grand mean and then the i tau the i tau is estimated with the sample i group mean minus the overall grand mean so with the side condition the model becomes the true model is this but then the fitted model you fit with the grand mean this is estimated with with this and the air term would be estimated with the observations minus the i group mean and so visually what's going on is this so let's say we have we want to estimate the brick density using four different oven temperatures so we cook the brick you know made of clay at these four temperatures and these are the, the brick densities that we observed with temperature one these are the brick density two brick densities with temperature oven temperature three and this is oven temperature four now, if we were to take all these observations and shove them down, we'd get an overall sample grand mean, and that's what we call y dot dot bar. Now, the the oven the ith treatment effect, so the the effect of temperature one is right here. It's the mean for this group. So this is an estimate of mu plus tau one. This would be the estimate the you know the second treatment effect second which is uh, mu plus tau 2 and so that would be the least squares estimate 3 and 4 now remember this is our model so we just estimated mu plus tau 1 which is this mu, mu plus tau 2 etc now to estimate the sigma squared you look at the variance within each treatment right so you estimate the sigma squared here estimate it using this 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 and then somehow combine them and that's the estimate for sigma squared i have a video on this playlist estimating uh, the air variance well that's all i have for this video um, this is part two of ten and the next one will be out in two or three days hope you enjoyed it i sure did please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one thanks bye